My name is Robert Ayla Wine. I own Ayla Wine Pottery, and I hope you can come by and see us. I've been potting for 32 years. If you like it, I made it, and if you don't like it, my wife made it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 51. I've been potting since I was 19 years old. And it's just been a lifelong obsession with me. Connie's always said that even when I'm not at work, I'm still at work because you get the, these shapes going on in your head and you're always, you're always thinking about it. Uh, one of the things that we strive in our business is color. We spend an awful lot of time on color. And uh, I'm, I'm what they call a copper red potter because I, I spend so much time trying to get good copper reds. I really try to make a beautiful shape pot, a very graceful pot, and one that, that has life to it. Uh, we don't make duplicates of very many things. Uh, you might see one that is a, a really nice piece and you think, well, he could make me another one tomorrow, but it's really not that way. Uh, most of what we make is just uh, one of a kind pieces. We try to make pottery that will make people think about the mountains. We put a lot of leaves that we collect from the area. We've been doing that for several years. Uh, we draw trees on them. We try to get color in our pots that you can see in nature. And we want you to take home a piece or a feel for the mountains with these pots. Uh, there's something about the Smoky Mountains that rubs off into your work, especially when you've lived here for a while. Your pots just sort of begin to reflect your surroundings. It's a lot of fun to, to know that we have pottery in every state of the Union, in practically every country of the world and it's just a real warm feeling to know that that many people appreciate what we do. Uh, we moved here in 1983, and in the mid middle of January, and I think I had $1,500 to come up here and set up a pottery and get my family through the winter. Had, we had two children, and I think back on that now, and it, it just, amazes me that we even survived that winter. We kind of joke around about calling our work genuine ala wines, but in a way it's true because every piece is individual and it's got its own flavor. Even if I tried to make two pieces alike, they never come out alike. I didn't tell her what to say. When you're in the Gatlinburg area, I hope you'll have time to come by and visit me and my staff at Ala Wine Pottery. Hope you can come by. Thank you. The directions to Ala Wine Pottery are very simple. <laughs> Just two turns from downtown Gatlinburg and you're there. It's located in the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community. At traffic light number three on the parkway or highway 441 in downtown Gatlinburg, turn and travel exactly three miles out highway 321 north to Glades Road. At the traffic light at Glades Road, turn left and go one and a half miles on Glades Road. Ala Wine Pottery will be on your left, where there's plenty of free parking. Just look for the red roof. That was good. <laughs> now you put a little life into it. I want just to take a pan shot. Am I looking at him? Do I look at you? Always look at me, dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looks like my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> We're open seven days a week, and I hope you can come by. My name's Robert Alewine. Come by and talk to me a little bit. Good to see you.
shop online at alowinepottery.net. Better the chair than the pants. <laughs> Nobody else cares either. <laughs> I've never met. My name is Robert Alewine, and I own Alewine Pottery, and I hope you can come by and see us. I've been potting for 32 years. If you like it, I made it, and if you don't like it, my wife made it. We try to make pottery that will make people think about the mountains. We try to get color in our pots that you can see in nature. The directions to Alewine Pottery are very simple. Just two turns from downtown Gatlinburg, and you're there. It's located in the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community.
you can see, me and the girls have been real busy this summer getting ready for you. We've got a lot of stock for you. We've got a lot of new colors. We've got a lot of new shapes. We've got a lamp store full of stock. We've got dinnerware. We We've got musicians playing for you. I got popcorn, I got soft drinks, I got potters working everywhere, and I want you to come by and see it. We're open seven days a week. seven days a week. We open at nine and we close at six. And I hope that you can come by. Good to see you. see I'm carrying out my boxes of pottery. It's the most beautiful pottery I've seen here in the Smoky Mountains and uh, got a lot of gifts for people. So thank you very much for having such a lovely show. Welcome to Edelman Pottery. Come see me. Come see me. Can do no better than that.
are the southern Appalachians, the southern highlands. Great silent giants sprawled full length on the land, rolling and tossing into eight states. Their boots lie in Pennsylvania, and their massive heads and shoulders are mountains in Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Georgia. High above the twisting valleys, they doze in the clouds, marking time by the century. Sometimes they seem to be ghosts on the gray horizon, shrouded in mist like an old man's memories. From the coves and valleys, hardtop roads wind quickly to the topmost peaks, leading the stranger up and up to the towers of the Blue Ridge, Yunakas and Smokies. These are highways in the real sense. The Blue Ridge Parkway, Skyline Drive, and trails cut high in the Great Smokies National Park. The man going up meets the cold, sparkling creek tumbling down. Down over timeless rock and swiftly through the forest. To the sheltered pool where the fisherman casts the fly to bright speckled trout. The highlands are wildflower gardens. Dogwood, laurel, azalea, trillium, trailing arbutus, and rhododendron. Two hundred kinds of native plants. when man came into the highlands. First, the Cherokee Indian, then the Spaniard hunting treasure, then the Scotch-Irish, German, and Huguenot settlers in search of home sites. They came nearly 200 years ago, cleared the wilderness to build log cabins, fought the forest for cropland, then settled down, walled in from the rest of the world. This is the story of their descendants, people who still live by simple, honest values in a world grown complicated all around them. The man who never strays from the highway will never learn the story or know the soul of the highlands. It lies farther back, in homes hidden deep in the hollow, and in the classroom of a mountain school. At half past three on a school day afternoon, the mountains call to the children of the southern highlands. The quiet old hills are jealous of schools and school teachers. I know, because I grew up in these mountains. I teach with textbook and blackboard, but the mountain uses magic and charm. In my sight, these children are the hope of a better future for the South. The mountain wants them to listen to the music of tumbling rivers, and get their feet tangled in a laurel slick. But because they are mountain children, they'll listen to me and to the mountain too, and keep the best of each. A hill child starts life with just about what his father and grandfather had. Pure air, pure water, and a far view from the front porch of his father's house. These things he doesn't have to work for. But everything else, he pays for in toil. He starts early. Courage, pride, and love of freedom are strong in his blood. Those same qualities led his forefathers into the mountain wilderness nearly two centuries ago. They battled the forest of their cornfields and took steady aim down the long barrel of a rifle when they needed meat for the table. They came from Scotland and Ireland, mostly. Clannish people, with dry humor and gunpowder tempers. Sentimental, too. Lovers of song and respecters of God. That's why their hearts melted when they saw the green giants of the Highlands. They were humbled, the way we are today. Ben Blair put it in words last Sunday when I saw him just before church. Well, I'll tell you, I think a man back here in these mountains enjoys himself just about as much as any people there is on earth living. 
There's nothing to bother him much, and he can serve the Lord. All this land of ours don't belong to us. It belongs to our Maker. And he has got control of it all. If he gives us the rain and the sunshine and the seed, well, we have good crops. And I think that's the greatest thing in life that could be handed down to us is just to live for the Lord while we're here and invite to get to a better world over yonder. Visit Ala Wine Pottery in the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts Community in Gatlinburg. Enjoy Ala Wine Crafts and Fun TV online right now. Go to alawinetv.com. Visit Ala Wine Pottery in the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts Community in Gatlinburg. Enjoy Ala Wine Crafts and Fun TV online right now. Go to alawinetv.com. with what they found. They cut logs to build cabins and split shingles to cover the roofs. Then they settled down, locked in the mountains for a century and a half. It's no wonder today's children are close to the old ways. Sometimes very close. Days, John McDowell has never had a spoonful of white sugar on his table. His daddy left him a sorghum press, and he makes his own sweetening. John himself feeds the sorghum cane into the press, and his old mare has been circling round John as long as I can remember. I had to smile when he told me the press was botched on from an iron foundry way yonder in Ohio, and there were 20 days of coming as it rode the last spell on the back of a mule critter. John's wife, Lucy, strains the squeezings through a patch of burlap. She makes the best cornbread for miles around, and her man makes the best sweetening. The steam rises up like mist off a mountain, 
and sweetens the air in the clearing. John's brother, Herman, stirs the sweet juice while it boils in the pan and gets thicker by the stir. <laughs> Makes me almighty hungry when I'm near it. If a man wanted a chair to sit on, he made it himself. And his womenfolk wove the seats from corn shucks. The hill woman made all the family's clothes. Time was when store-bought things flooded the mountains and folks were ashamed to own homemade things. Then the tourists came into the highlands and carried on about the old-timey quilts and the home-forged ironwork. So, the loom and the forge came back to life. I like to see the shuttle and the bellows in the hands of a mountain girl or boy, because I know there's a naturalness in it. And it's something they'll always remember. The way they'll remember the easy-come rhythm of an old-fashioned mountain square dance. Big ring, circle there. Hi folks, you know every day we have people call us that are having a hard time finding our shop and, and we are in kind of a hidden spot in the county but we are a Gatlinburg business we're on highway three off of highway 321 but 321 runs through Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge up into Wares Valley and we a lot of times we get people calls from Wares Valley wanting to know where we are but you have to go to Gatlinburg to get to our business. So if you're in Pigeon Forge, come to Gatlinburg. Now, once you get to Gatlinburg, all the lights are numbered. So if you'll look for light number three, there's one way you can turn there. So you want to turn on to Highway 321. Now, when you turn, you'll go three miles out that road and you'll pass uh, the post office, you'll pass the food city, There's, just keep going through it, and at three miles you'll come to light 3A, and that is Glades Road. Now there's only one way you can turn there also, and you'll be turning onto Glades and you'll go a little under a mile and a half to get to our store. So remember, we're a Gatlinburg business. You have to come to Gatlinburg to get to our store. And we're off of Highway 321. We look forward to seeing you. We're open every day. We open at nine o'clock. And during the season, we stay open until six. We've got live music. We've got popcorn. You can sit around and play checkers. We've got rocking chairs everywhere. And we also have some pretty nice pottery. You can watch our potters work. You can talk to the people. Just come out and spend some time with us. I think it'll be worth your trip. Good to see you.